Views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of PalTalk.com, AVM Software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users. On demand on iTunes and on YouTube and on my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com, where you can post your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not, and where you can subscribe to my news feed at Twitter.com slash Gary Baumgarten. And uh, thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio. We're syndicated to an additional 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. I welcome you to the show. Well, the British government has launched an inquiry into the Iraq war. And they're looking at uh, not just how they got into the war, but the conduct of their troops therein. Now, I could tell you very quickly the answer to the first question on behalf of the Brits, and then they can quickly move to the second question without wasting a lot of time and energy. The answer to the first question was they followed the lead of the United States. Tony Blair was enamored with George W. Bush. W. asked him to uh, send troops to Iraq, and the answer was yes. That was the beginning, the middle, and the end of all that, or as the Brits And uh, the Aussies would say that was it, full stop. Now, when it comes to the conduct of uh, the soldiers, I would say that like the United States, it probably would be a good idea to uh, investigate that. But I think that we're going to find that with the exception of a few anomalies that were well documented and reported, both the British troops and the American troops uh, acted uh, within the framework of honorable combat rules. How's that for a way of spinning it? But it's a completely different story when we look at the leader of the pack, and that's the United States. There is no inquiry here as to why we really went to Iraq. We don't know whether the president was aware or not that the intel that suggested that there were weapons of mass destruction in the control of Saddam Hussein was inaccurate. Did he know and push forward regardless because he had another agenda? Or did he not know? And if he did not know, was that simply a failing of the intelligence community or was he purposely misled? We don't know. And it's very unfortunate that we do not. And until we get all these questions answered, we cannot have full reconciliation within the United States. We cannot have full reconciliation with the people of Iraq. We need to know what the truth of the matter is. And we just don't know. You know, the Bush White House changed three or four times the reason why we went into Iraq. First, it was for weapons of mass destruction. Then it was to take down an evil dictator. Then it was uh, to fight the uh, al-Qaeda there, because if we didn't fight them there, we would be fighting them here, even though there were were no al-Qaeda cells within Iraq prior to the time that the United States busted in and the borders were no longer secure and they came flooding in from other countries. And by the way, the unintended or maybe intended consequence of all this. I I, I would hope that it was unintended, but foolish nonetheless, was that Saddam Hussein, as bad a guy as he was, and he was, at least served as a counterbalance to the regime of Iran. Now we have the Iranians influencing the internal affairs of Iraq. Surprise, surprise. So I say, bully, bully, Brits. Bully, bully for uh, going ahead with your inquiry. Now, the United States, is time for us to follow your lead. I'm so glad that Cassandra from the United Kingdom is first. 
Cassandra, what's the weather like there? Is it raining as it normally is in in, in and around London town? Well, Gary, you know what the weather's like here. <clears throat> you, you know, there's a reason I ask. The reason that there's a reason I ask. You know, we've been talking a lot here in the United States, and we will again, and also here on News Talk Online on PalTalk.com about health care. And we all know that uh, one of the things you do not want to do is expose yourself to the sun too much because then you could contract skin cancer. And uh, I know of a fellow who went to a doctor here in the United States because his family genetically has been having that problem of skin cancer. And he said, can you prescribe to me something that's really a uh, great uh, sunscreen to prevent me from having uh, skin cancer? And the doctor said, sure, and he wrote him a prescription to take a flight to London. <laughs> well, I think that's that's pretty good, Gary. <laughs> and, of course, you're not... I know, it took, me a long time to, it took me a long time to spit that one out, didn't it? Okay, so, Cassandra, you've studied this uh, inquiry. You've been following this inquiry that's going on in Iraq. Did I nail it? This is what they're trying to find out is the real reasons why... The Brits went into the uh, UK and to uh, investigate allegations, true or not, about misconduct on the part of your military on the ground there? Absolutely. There are, there are three phases to this inquiry. One is the run-up to the war, uh, another is the preparations for the war, and then the conduct of the war. And, and and also presumably the withdrawal from the war. So we have the three things. Let me just fill you in a little bit on the on the time scale of this, though, Gary, because we had uh, this inquiry has been asked for for six years. You know, this is the fourth time that an inquiry has been requested of this government. And you know why they wouldn't do it before? Because there were elections coming up. So for the last six years, this inquiry has been, uh, you know, has been requested and has been denied. And, uh, you know, the, and what the, what the uh, Tories are doing now and have been doing for, for the last year or so is accusing him of doing a slow U-turn <clears throat> and, uh, you know, trying, to, um, trying to, to slow everything down. And the inquiry is, it's not a judicial inquiry. So it won't be subject to criminal law or, or anything like that, but it will be free to attribute blame to whoever is um, whoever is found to be uh, blameworthy. So that's the um, you know sort of that's the uh, the um, likely outcome that that it will be you know there will be uh, blame attributable. Um, they will be. They will also expose if anybody lied at any point during the war, the the, uh, the run-up to the war and the actual uh, prosecution of the war. 